Crossroads was first broadcast in November 1964, in the long ago distant days of black and white TV. Kings Oak, this quiet little village outside Birmingham, was the setting for one of Britain's earliest soaps. The series went out five nights a week and at its peak reached audiences of 15 million. Crossroads followed the lives of the staff and guests in a fictional motel. Today, two of its most famous characters, Benny Hawkins, played by Paul Henry, and Jill Mortimer, played by Jane Rossington, have returned to the main location to remember the good old days. Gosh, it looks good in the sun, doesn't it? I can, I can remember it all quite well in some ways, but in other ways I don't. I mean. This hotel is the one we used mainly because it was convenient, it was near and we could come here regularly. And it was a long time before they got absolutely fed up with us. No, it's been going a couple of hours, but I don't think you've missed anything. Thank anyway, you. do enjoy yourselves. Thank, Thank you. Very much. you. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye. As everybody keeps reminding me, I did say the first few words. In fact, I was actually on the telephone foreground saying Crossroads Motel and I was explaining to somebody what a motel was all about. And it was a way of explaining to the audience. The character of Benny first appeared in 1975 as an odd job man around the motel, but became famous because of his trademark green woolly hat. Paul Henry landed the part after one of the Crossroads writers saw him performing on stage. The part came about, I was at the Birmingham Rep where I'd, where I'd been for eight years at the Old and the New, and a man called John Rollison wrote the the, that particular storyline. He said to me, how do you fancy Paul playing this character? It's great. He was writing it and I was reading it, saying, oh, this is good, this is good. And I, I was going to do six weeks and I went off filming and I thought, what shall I wear? Because nobody said anything about costume or anything. And I got these overalls, uh, I got a little green woolly hat that was my brother's that he used for fishing, and I put that on. I don't think it, I don't know whether it was the worst thing I ever did or what, but I think the character was so good that if I'd have put a trilby on, it would have been, you know, just as uh, dangerous. But of course, everybody still, after 20 years, say, where's your hat, Benny? Now, it's very easy. This is preparing for a Benny. Now, makeup, top of the door. I think the thing is with the, the Benny character was so popular because he didn't threaten anyone. He was very childlike. He, uh, the, the man wasn't threatened by him and the women felt sorry for it. I hate you. <laughs> I mean, uh, he was a, it was a fantastic character. I mean, I loved it because I always thought, well, he's such a, a fantastic character. I can use every emotion to the extreme. I could cry, I could lose my temper. Linda? Linda, what, what are you playing at? Huh? Come on, Linda. What, Linda? Benny? What have you done? One thing that Crossroads was infamous for was its cheap-looking, creaky sets. Of course, in the early days, they did, well, they were theatre sets because we did so many um, episodes. Although it was hard work, you, you, for me, I would perhaps be on reception, in my reception clothes, answering the phone, and then another scene, cameras would all go away, and I'd be rushing to get changed because I'm suddenly going out to a party, and I've got to get into this frock or something and rush over the other side of the set, trip over thousands of things, and probably on the way the sets did wobble, I don't know. Here it's all go, as uh, Mrs Blundell would say. Really? <laughs> <laughs> With Carlos over in Morven seeing his wife and Philip working late, I don't know if I'm coming or going. Well, don't let me hold things up. I know these business crises only too well. Oh, it's all right. I've given my staff their instructions. Just let's hope they can carry them out. Ah, now you're catching on to the secrets of top management. <laughs> Am I? Oh, yes, you are. That's the trick. I've given my staff 
Delegation of authority, that's the thing. <laughs> Don't keep a dog and bark yourself. Yes. Here he is. Here he comes. We'll make the dinner. And that was exciting, but the lovely thing was that you actually got an idea of what the whole show was about, what all the other characters were doing, what the whole story was happening. Well, it's not like that now. It's quite different. You don't know how happy you're about to make me. After a hiatus of 13 years, a revamped Crossroads returned to our screens in 2001, and it was at the next location that Jean became the Lady of the Lake. This was the first reincarnation of uh, Crossroads. And I came in um, as the one link, I think, with the past. And then Tony came back, at Adam, as Adam Chance, again with a link with the past. We had a whirlwind romance again, got married again, although I don't think we'd ever got divorced, but nobody seemed to notice that. Anyway, we got married, and during the reception, he drowned me in the lake. Can you gather round, everybody? I think the bride and groom are ready to cut the cake. Uh, could we give it five more minutes, please, Patrick? Is everything all right? I seem to have mislaid my wife. It's more like a French farce than a wedding. Why did he leave it so Ex long? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he had so many opportunities, didn't he, before, but never mind. Despite a loyal fan base, a span of five decades and nearly 5,000 episodes, the Crossroads Motel finally closed its doors in May 2003. Surely that's that. Great days, weren't they? Yeah. Well, I wonder. Will it ever happen again? <laughs> you never know, do you? There's a lot worse on the box. Yeah. <laughs>